Okay, here is the solution to example 11. This came out in the board exam 2013. The deck of a bridge consists of red metal deck with 100 mm concrete slab on top. The superstructure supporting the deck is made of wide planched steel beams spaced 1.2 meters on centers, strengthened by cover plate 16 mm by 260 mm, one at the top and one at the bottom. The beams are simply supported over a span of 25 meters. The loads on each beam are as follows. So we have dead load, including beam weight and deck, 12 kilonewton per meter. Wheel live loads, front wheel 18 kilonewtons, the rear wheel 72 kilonewtons. Wheel base is 4.3 meters, the distance between the front and the rear wheels. Impact factor is given by 15 over L plus 37 and should not exceed 30%, where L is the length in meters. So these are the properties of the W850 by 185 wide flange beam. So then the first question is to calculate the composite moment of inertia of the wide flange and the cover plates effective in resisting the loads in express in 10 to the 6 and m to the 4th. So it is equal to the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis of the beam, which is this, plus the transfer moment of inertia of area of the two cover plates with respect to the neutral axis, which remains the neutral axis by symmetry. Calculate the maximum bending stress in the beam due to dead load alone. So bending stress is mo maximum moment, which is at the mid span. C, which is distance from neutral axis to either top fiber or bottom fiber, extreme fibers, then over moment of inertia calculated in part 1. Then number 3, calculate the maximum bending moment due to live loads in kilonewton meter. So I will uh, generalize the situation in computing the maximum moment due to live loads. Then number four, calculate the maximum bending stress in megapascals due to live loads plus impact in megapascals because uh, live loads will cause vibrations and therefore there should be impact to be considered. So before we solve the problem, let's have this principle on moving concentrated live loads in computing uh, maximum moment, how to position the live loads in order to obtain or to get the maximum moment and also the maximum shear, the maximum shear you know, some simply supported beam due to live loads. So let us say this is the simple span and we have two live loads here. So let us assume P1 is the heavier load and P2 the lighter load. So Definitely, the maximum moment occurs when the heavier load is close to the center of the beam. So first, we have to locate the resultant of the two forces. So that's assume, let's assume that is the resultant, the distance of the resultant force, which is P1 plus P2, from the heavier load is denoted by E, and the maximum. In fact, absolute maximum moment occurs under the concentrated load because by experience, the maximum moment occurs where shear is zero. So for instance, we have we have to draw the shear diagram. So you have to rise then between RA and P1. There is no load in between, so it remains horizontal and or constant. And we have to subtract P1. So Definitely P1 is greater than RA, so that's why it will cross zero shear. So it, that's why the maximum moment, of course, under load one. So we will call that distance position of load one from the left support when the maximum moment occurs under load one as X. So that's the condition. So the span is denoted by L. Therefore, the distance of the resultant, because we apply Varigman's theorem here, instead of using P1 and P2, we use the resultant. Its distance from B is L minus, minus X minus E. 
that should be L minus X minus E. So, moment is reaction at A times X. If you cut section 1, if you cut at, section, at 1, then the maximum moment at 1 is equal to, considering the forces in the left side, so it is just RA times X. So, this is our working equation for moment, which we are going to maximize. So, considering the entire system, summation moment at D equals 0, so you have RA times L equals R times quantity L minus X minus E. So, that means RA is R over L, quantity L minus X minus E. So, M, therefore, the maximum moment is RA, R over L, L minus X minus E times X. So, this reduce R over L, LX minus X squared minus EX. Then, we want to maximize moment, so we do differentiate moment with respect to x. So that would be r over l times quantity l minus 2x minus e, then equate to 0 because this represents slope. And the slope must be horizontal. The slope should be 0 to obtain the maximum uh, moment. So 0 times l over r is 0. So that means the value, the terms in the parentheses should be equated to 0. And if we solve for x, x would be equal to L over 2 minus E over 2. So if we if we're going to interpret this result, that means that the maximum moment of course under the heavier load, and that heavier load and the resultant of the loads are positioned in such a way that in between them, exactly the center of D1 and R would be the center line or the speed point of the D. So this is the result. It is L over 2. So X is L over 2 minus E over 2. So that means the midpoint of E is the center of the D. So that is how to obtain the maximum moment, position, the heaviest load, and the resultant of the load such that the center of that heaviest load and the resultant is the center of the D. So that is, this is X. So this is L over 2, so X is L over 2, and this should be E over 2. So having now derived the positioning of the loads, live loads, to cause maximum moment in the beam, then we have to generalize it, the maximum moment to occur under the load, it should be positioned, and the resultant of the loads equidistant from the center of the D. So, in between T1 and R should be the center of the D. So, next, to maximize the shear, the maximum shear is either RA or RB. So, that happens when the heaviest load is positioned over the re reaction and the rest of the loads on the span. So, that's it. We have to position the load, the heaviest load, especially over the support, so that the reaction of that support would be maximum. And that is the maximum shear. So that is. So for maximum shear, it is the reaction at the support when the heaviest load is over that support and the other loads in the span. Then all you have to do is compute that RA. When this heaviest load, for example, T1 is the heaviest load, is positioned over here. So 2 will be somewhere here. And you can easily compute RA. That's the maximum share. Now let's proceed to the problem. Solution 11. So this is now the figure. These are the two cover plates. The properties. The depth is 850. And thickness of cover plate 16. The width of the cover plate to 60 mm. Then this is the center line. Therefore, 425 plus 16 is 441. 441 from the center or neutral axis to the extreme fiber. But the distance of the centroid of the cover plate to the neutral axis is 425 half, half of 850, 425 plus half of 16 is 8. So that's why it's 433. So that's 441. So, first moment of inertia with respect to the neutral axis is I sub CGX of this wide plans plus uh, by transfer formula, 
2 times moment of inertia of the rectangle is 260 16 cube over 12 plus area 260 times 16 and distance square is 430 square. So 2662 times 10 to the 6 for the wide plans plus 260 16 cube over 12 plus 260 times 16 times 430 square times 2 because there are two cover plates. So solving for the composite moment of inertia is equal to 4222 times 10 to the 6 mm to the 4. Next is the maximum what's that? Maximum uh, bending stress due to dead load alone. So it is maximum moment due to dead load C where C is 441 and I is 4222 times 10 to the 6. Now to solve for the maximum moment due to dead load since dead loads are uniform the maximum moment occurs at the center of the beam so it is W dead load times L square over 8 that's the formula right so 12 times 25 square over 8 is 97.5 kilonewton meter substitute into this equation so FB is 937.5 so we multiply that by, by 1000 square to convert that to newton mm this is mm and this is mm to the fourth. So newton mm square divided by mm to the fourth is newton mm square. Newton per mm square or megapascal. So 97.92 megapascals. Next is the uh, maximum. Let's compute for maximum moment to live load first. So remember that we have to position 72 is the heavier load. So the resultant of the two loads is 72 plus 18. And the two will remain on the span because the span is long, 25. So the resultant should be between 72 and here. The resultant this is 90 kilonewtons. And the distance between them is E. So we imagine that the center or the midpoint of E is the center of the beam. So that means this, this the maximum moment occurs under load 2, the heavier load. So let's compute for E by Varignon's theorem. 90 times E equals 18 times 4.3. By the way, the distance between 1 and 2 is 4.3. So that's 4.3. So E is equal to 0.86 meter. So divide that by 2. So that means that's 0.43. So this is 12.5 or 25 divided by 2 minus E over 2. So 12.5 minus half of 0.86. So it will give us 12.07 meter. So having found the distance of the heavier load from the left support that's solved for the reaction at the left support so it is reaction times 25 equals 90 times by the way the distance of the resultant is also 12.07 so that's r1 that's r2 so summation moment at 2 equals 0 so r1 times 25 equals 90 times 12.07 Solving for R1, R1 equals 43.45 kN, so the maximum moment is 43.45 times 12.07. So maximum moment due to live load is 524.4 kN. And finally, the maximum bending stress due to live loads alone plus the impact. So impact factor is 15 over 25 plus 37 over L plus 37. This is even. The value is 0.2419, which is less than 30% or 0.3. Therefore, we should adapt this impact factor. So that means the maximum moment is equal to the computed moment due to live load earlier, 524.4. Then we just magnify this moment here by adding this impact factor. So you multiply this by 1 plus the impact factor. So M max equal plus impact equals 524.4 times 1 plus 0.2419. So the maximum moment with the impact is 651.24 kN. So the maximum bending stress due to live loads plus the impact is 
back to this formula, moment, maximum moment C over I. So, it is equal to 651.25 times I ignore 1000 square. So, we also ignore 10 to the 6 so, or 2222. So, solving for the maximum bending stress with the impact which is equal to 68.02 mega pascals. So, that's it for problem 11.